All right, guys, so this is where we stopped in the last lecture. React DND is squeezed between React and the DOM, and React DND communicates with the DOM uh, through different things, backend DND events, item types, and the way all of that kind of like gets communicated to us is through monitors. So let's jump into this and try to explain them one by one. So first thing is, what are backends? So there are different backends, and the backends here are kind of literally the backend uh, that supports the way React DND communicates with the DOM. So there are three different backends right now supported. One is HTML5. So that is the backend, the method that you, the React DND can read the drag and drop events from the DOM. And there is touch also. So if you only use uh, the HTML5 backend, you will not be able to read any um, touch drag and drop events. And the last one is test. Uh, so test backend is just supporting uh, the testing for DND interactions and all. Now, it's important also to understand here what is the concept behind having such an abstract uh, thing as backends. The whole point here is that backends are a way of communicating between React DND and the DOM. So, say for example, you can you want to make a React uh, uh, app that actually works in um, um, in virtual reality, and in that virtual reality, you want to have drag and drop interactions as well. So, you can write your own backend that will communicate whatever is happening in your virtual reality environment back. To React DND. That's why uh, the library authors chose to have this concept of backends because you can support different types of backends and you can write your own implementation of backends. The second concept here is called the item types. Now, it's easy to imagine a situation where you have many many different draggable items and many many different drag, uh, droppable drop targets. Sorry, drop targets, and you want to be able to know what kind of thing are you dragging and where can you and where you cannot drop that thing and the way react dnd handles all of that is uh, through the item types so your item types are the source of identity and everything that happens in um, the drag and drop interactions so you can say that this item is a card with id one two three five whatever or you can say that this item is an image and the image cannot be dropped where the card can be dropped and vice versa the card cannot be dropped where the image can be dropped and uh, like I said, they specify what can be dropped on what, and they do carry information about whatever you have just dragged. And again, the whole point of having this concept of item types is to separate things, is to make sure that React DND understands what the, the relevant information about that DOM element that we are dragging when it comes to the drag and drop interaction. So you tell it what it is, which will make React DND understand where it can drop it and uh, um, on top of what it can hover and so on and so forth. So this is an abstraction that's very important and essential here because uh, the more you build stuff with React DND, the, re the more you realize that you'll have you want to be able to support many, many different interactions. And some of these interactions can and have to be separated from other interactions. And the way you do that is through item types. The last thing here is monitors. So imagine all the drag and drop events happening on the DOM side. Now, all these drag and drop events is are events when you start dragging the element, when you let go of the element, when you drop it, or when the drag starts, or when the drag stops, or in or when the drag is happening, and so on. All these events are actually like inconsistent. They happen differently across different browsers, and depending on the backend side, the, the, whatever backend you're using, and all of that. Uh, and what happens, what monitors do for us is they abstract all of that and they only communicate the drag and drop events to your React components. And the way they do that is they do it through uh, React uh, context. So it's being passed as context. So imagine everything that's happening on the DOM side for, regarding the drag and drop events, whether the drag started, the drag stopped, the drag is happening, and all of that is being passed to you as a context that you can handle. And that context is called the monitors, and which is really a good name. So it's monitoring whatever events happening on the DOM side 
and it's available for you inside your React components uh, as a context that will add props and take away props and make some props available for you based on whatever drag and drop event is happening. So that's it. This is wraps the interactions between React D and D and the DOM elements. And in the next video, we will take a look at what happens between React D and D and React components. I'll see you guys in the next one.